Hi, welcome to this video in which I'm going to demonstrate frequency-based iterative learning control to you. Well, let's start off with showing the feedback system which we are going to use. This is the block diagram of our basic feedback system. And this is a position controller. A position controller um, based on a position set point, of course, and the position as an output. And it's based on a system which consists of a motor and a load firmly connected to that motor shaft. So a single mass system. And the motor voltage is the input and the angular position of the rotor is the output. So this is a third order model. And um, we are going to control that system by a lead filter over here. And both the process and the controller are made discrete by using Tustin. Um, I'm going to show you later on in this um, demonstration that we also are going to use two feet forwards, one for the acceleration and one for the velocity. But first of all, I'm going to demonstrate that this is really a third order process by looking to the Bode plot of that process. And when we look to the uh, continuous time Bode plot, then we see um, this behavior in which we show in the Bode amplitude plot a minus 63 um, dK, uh, dB per decade slope over here. And the phase plot shows a phase lag of minus 270 um, degrees over here. So this is characteristic for a third order process. Well, let's have a look to the uh, Bode plot of the controller. When we do that in a continuous domain, um, we see the corresponding Bode plot, Bode amplitude plot for that lead filter, that tame PD filter, and here we see the characteristic phase lead of that controller. So that is a lead filter. Okay, so this is my um, feedback loop which I'm going to use. And later on, as I said, I'm also going to involve some standard feed forwards based on acceleration and velocity. But these feed forwards have been calculated based on this theoretical model for my process. But um, in real life, of course, there are tolerances in this process due to the fact that we, you are going to make, for instance, more products or due to drift. So I'm going to define some tolerances between these feed forwards and that process to make it more a real situation. Um, so I'm going to look to the parameters which are dominant for these feed forwards and they are mainly the resistance of the motor, so the R, the motor torque constant KT, and the total inertia, so motor shaft plus load. So let's specify tolerance on the motor resistance, for instance, uh, 5%, the torque constant to 2%, and let's specify the tolerance on the total inertia as 10%. Okay, now let's look to the performance of only the feedback loop, so without feed forwards and without ILC. Well, that is what we are going to do, and here we see here we see the result. We see the S-curved trajectory because it was a second order trajectory, and we see two curves. And the blue one is reference, so my set point, and the red bar one is the real output, so it's the real position. And we see a nice tracking error in between, and that error is also depicted in this figure over here. And the maximum error, well, that is, mm, let's say, um, 8 times 10 to the power minus 4, and because this is in meters, so it is in the maximum tracking error of 0.8 millimeter, which is really a nice large tracking error. So now let's have a look what ILC can do to reduce that tracking error. So we are going to um, the we are going to ILC over here. Yes, there we are. And we are going to look um, first of all how the ILC loop looks like. Well, this is um, the block diagram of my system, including the ILC loop. Remember, remember, this is my feedback system as discussed earlier. These are the basic feed forwards, and this is my iterative learning controller. Here we have the learning filter over here based on the inverse of the process sensitivity and we use the zero phase error tracking controller to, um, to 
construct that L filter. This is my learning rate, and here we have implement, implemented the low pass filter, the Q filter, which is in this case a second order low pass filter, but a worth filter, and we used filled filled um, to get a non phase shifting low pass filter. And here we have a memory loop, which is in practice writing uh, the data to the MATLAB workspace and reading the data back over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to before perform 10 runs, 10 steps. So I'm, I'm, I'm performing 10 equal steps over here. And in between these steps, which um, uh, I believe are, uh, I can see it over here, take, well, 0.25 seconds. Um, I have a second in between. And during um, these steps, I perform the ILC loop, so all the calculations are related to ILC. So what we're going to do is we make a step in uh, 0.25 seconds, and then this data, the error is captured, and um, based on the learning filter and the low pass filter and the previous feed forward output, we calculate the new feed forward contribution. And during the next run, we are using um, that feed forward contribution, contribution for every sample. And then um, we capture the error again, and based on that error when the motor stops, we calculate the new feed forward contribution, contribution, sorry for that. And the next run, we are going to use that contribution again, and we do that 10 times. And we'll, we'll look to how the tracking error over here will decrease as a function of time. So every iteration, we expect that the error will, will get lower and lower. Okay, so this is um, the basic uh, ILC loop, and we don't use these standard feed forwards in this situation. So, okay, so let's look the the performance of ILC. Um, what we're going to do is we specify at first the, the learning rate, the gamma, and we set that to 0.5 and now MATLAB is performing 10 runs. So every run um, we capture the error, we perform the ILC calculation and we define the new feed forward uh, input for my controller. And here are the results. Okay, that's all and we get one more plot over here and that is this plot. Let me explain what we see over here. This is the situation, this is my tracking error um, in the starting situation. So this is the same plot as we have shown over here. So that is the starting situation in which I don't have any feed forward. So we start off with the situation and every run we see that uh, the tracking error um, is reduced by the use of ILC. It get lower and lower and lower and lower. And this is after 10 runs. This is the only error which is left and well let's say this is at the maximum 0.1 times 10 to the power minus 5 so this is a maximum tracking error of 1 micrometer and remember we started off with 0.8 millimeters so that is really good and as a reference i also um, performed ilc with a Q filter, which is a uh, uh, is not a non-phase shifting Q filter, so a standard low pass filter, and we have seen that we need that um, non-phase shifting Q filter because we have to compensate for every sample at the right moment. So when we have a phase shifting filter, we compensate at the wrong time. So here we use filled filled, and here we didn't use filled filled. And what you see is that the tracking error in that case um, is still reduced with respect to the um, uh, starting situation, but it's much higher, of course, than using a really good non-phase shifting Q filter. So what you should do is use field fills for constructing that uh, Q filter so that you um, um, compensate every sample with um, your, your, your feed forward with the right information. So that is what we have seen, um, uh, how ILC will perform. Um, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to use standard feed forwards also. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going back to my system over here. 
um, let's um, show the um, block diagram over here. So I have um, the situation with my feedback control, the IL, uh, ILC loop over here, and I'm also going to, uh, to use these feed forwards, which I defined, and um, I'm going to use the tolerances I have specified before. And why I'm doing that? Because also in a case when you are going to use ILC, standard feed forwards still help because they st in that case, I'm starting off with a smaller error over here, uh, which I'm going to show you in a couple of minutes. And that helps, of course, because after 10 runs, I get a better performance than, um, um, uh, uh, than when I don't use these standard feed forwards. So I put that away. And first of all, let's go back to my um, feedback controller in which I'm going to show you the performance only based on uh, standard feed forwards. So no ILC, but only feedback with standard feed forwards. So this is the situation with standard feed forwards. And then I um, have a maximum tracking error of 20 micron. And this was my situation with only my feedback controller with no feed forwards at all. So this is really much more better when I start off with um, my standard feed forwards. Um, now let's see what um, ILC can improve uh, with respect to this starting situation. So I'm going back to ILC and now I'm going to perform ILC with these standard feed forwards. So I'm using this uh, the same value for the learning uh, 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 rate, so for the gamma, and I'm going to perform 10 runs again. And after 10 runs, I'm going to plot all these different tracking errors and uh, I'm going to show you the remaining tracking error. So MATLAB has uh, almost finished its calculations and here are the results again. So this is ILC plus feed forwards. In two cases, ILC plus feed forward with a non-phase shifting Q filter. And in the second uh, situation, we have a, um, a Q filter which uh, has a phase shift. Well, this is the end value, the end error for a situation in which we use standard feed forwards plus ILC after 10 runs. And this is really, really good. We end up uh, at, at really at the maximum of 0.1 times 10 to the power minus 6, which is 0.1 micrometer. So remember, with standard feed forwards, we started with um, 20 microns and uh, we end up at 0.1 micrometer over here. So um, what we've seen over here, ILC really works. It isn't that difficult to implement. Um, it really works. And when you uh, apply also the standard feed forwards, um, yeah, you, you really come to a better situation. And after 10 runs, well, this is the most optimum situation which uh, you could create because probably when you uh, do another run, uh, it doesn't bring you uh, anything more. So um, that's all about the demonstration for iterative learning control. I hope you enjoyed it and I wish you very good luck with implementing and designing your own ILC loop.